Okay. Uh, my talk will be very, very simple, very pedagogical, step by step, only about elementary aspects, uh, because uh, the transparencies uh, do, not, uh, uh, do not allow complicated forgery. So I consider, the, 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 uh, of course, the Sherrington Kirkpatrick spin glass uh, mean field model, mm -hmm. which is a kind of uh, easing model, so to speak, for the, for the um, disordered models. And then, uh, as a laboratory, I take also the Derrida random energy model to check out whether something works there, then, uh, of course, it must work there. So we consider <coughs> n spinizing configurations. Uh, this will be mean field, so that there is no structure on the, on the set. Uh, one to n and uh, sigma r plus, uh, plus or minus one. Of course, there are a gigan gigantic number of configuration to, to, to the n, as uh, every check player knows, this number can be very, very large if n is large. So it's not a problem of making uh, explicit computation. For each configuration, we introduce random variables, k of sigma, in the simplest case, we take them as Gaussian, zero average, and the covariance is given, for example, by the square of the, the overlap, as in the celebrated uh, Sherrington Kirkpatrick model, where the overlap is uh, a kind of uh, scalar product among the configurations uh, uh, normalized, so that it is between uh, minus one and one. This model was introduced uh, very long ago, but <laughs> is so rich and so deep that the research has been continuous and the thousands of papers are dedicated to it. In the case of the Derrida random energy model, we define uh, uh, the Q equal one or zero according to whether the two configurations are equal or they are different. As uh, remembering the, uh, the uh, Old nuclear physics models, uh, this is, uh, uh, there was something, Wigner and others, uh, something like, uh, introduced uh, something uh, which resembles this. So the, en the energies associated to each uh, level are uh, independent among uh, the others. So this is, uh, uh, this would be taken as uh, energy, where I put uh, square root of n here, this is for good uh, physical reasons, and the square root of n, n is only for aesthetic reason, because I like the formula which come out when uh, there is two here. So Boltzmann keeps, Boltzmann tells us that we have to make the sum over the exponent, the Boltzmann factor, and uh, we get the partition function. Beta is the inverse of the temperature, and uh, of course, this partition function will uh, 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 depend on the randomness which uh, does exist in the noise. So free energy now is, uh, is random and is given, uh, of course, by the log, but for the term minus beta. So rescaling uh, uh, is necessary in, in order to have a good thermodynamic limit. In fact, it's not difficult to prove. I mean, uh, it, it is not difficult. It is uh, almost trivial, but uh, it took some time that the limit when n goes to infinity does exist. Uh, this is a random variable. These are random variables. So almost surely in the probability space where all k's are uh, defined, almost surely from a mathematical point of view. There is a so-called empirical law of large numbers, which is uh, uh, build uh, uh, drawing, uh, drawing um, uh, dices, uh, and uh, this is okay. So there is mathematical aspect and the physical aspect which are uh, completely in agreement. In this limit, of course, since it does exist uh, almost uh, everywhere, any randomness is lost, they call it A O beta. It's not a free energy, minus beta free energy is equal to this. The limit can be calculated also through the quenched averages. So uh, take the partition function, then the log, and then the average with respect to the noise, and you get the same. So it is clear that some, the fluctuations are not uh, so strong. Either take almost surely or take in the, in the average. And in fact, uh, uh, 
the fluctuations can be uh, controlled uh, and uh, interpolatory interpolation methods, and you get. Now there is uh, I just a recall for uh, younger that uh, metallurgic terminology <laughs> in this, uh, because uh, this is uh, the quenched average. So it is very important that I we take a partition function. We make the sum of all the sigmas according to Boltzmann prescription. So the noise in the K acts as external noise. It is not involved in the thermodynamic <coughs> equilibrium, but affects thermodynamic equilibrium of the sigmas. Then we take the and we at uh, the end we take the average with respect to Obviously, we could take, and this is uh, what I will do in general in a moment, also the annealed uh, average, so that uh, the external noi noise does participate to the thermodynamic equilibrium, and uh, uh, take uh, uh, the average, and, and, then, and then the log. So this is, this is the annealed, quenched annealed. It's uh, metallur are metallurgic uh, operations like the, the producers of uh, Japanese uh, swords uh, know very well how to anneal, how to quench. OK, uh, it's not, uh, the, uh, the, expre the annealed expression is, ca is very simple to calculate, because uh, uh, the average of the sigma is equal to the sum over sigma is equal to the sum of the average. And uh, then it turns out, since uh, for each, uh, I mean, all the, configurations become completely separated because this, av this average, so the result will not depend on the configuration sigma and uh, what is, is given uh, here. Of course, there is a term logarithm too, because then there is a, a sum over sigma, you do, and uh, it, uh, it comes to, to, to the end. And the expression, as it is very well known, is not correct, but in any case, since the logarithm is concave, the average of the log is less than the log of the average, so this is a rigorous upper bound, which of course will be preserved in the limit. We are interested, of course, in the explicit expression for A O B, that the free energies are given by a variational principle, which is, uh, is not just uh, uh, funny to consider it, but it is second principle of thermodynamics, so this is real physics. So there, there will be a variational principle, but it, it uh, will be a long journey. And uh, so let me recall the uh, concept of replica. We take uh, uh, the innovation in my talk is that I do not call the number of replica small n, but small s, because <laughs> for me, n is a real number, and s. So s is equal to 1, 2, and, and so on, positive integer. S replicated system, the configuration is uh, S time product space of the original system. So the variables now are sigma A of I plus or minus one, where I will denote the site, and A will denote the, uh, uh, the label of uh, the replica. So the number of sites is uh, S multiplied by N. The energy is the sum of all, all en energies, with respect to each replica. But of course, when you take the sum of all sigmas, it will, it will factor out. Each term will give rise exactly to the same expression, so that the free energy will be given by the power S of the free energy for a single uh, replica. So uh, what, uh, what happens that the log of z bar, of course, is equal to s times the log of z. They are all identical terms. So the, the replica in thermodynamics is a, a very simple thing. Uh, I must tell that uh, replicas are not just the physical copies of the system. You take a disordered system, a piece of the disorder of, uh, of a spin glass, then you take another disordered system. So these are not replicas. They are uh, different copies. Replicas have the same noise inside. Each replica has the same noise. <coughs> so trivially, the, uh, uh, the free energy per site is equal to the previous free energy. And so 
uh, what is the, the, uh, the idea to take in a replica? So, of course, if you look only at the thermal direct, the thermodynamics, you do not gain anything. But there is a uh, very subtle aspect that if we take the annealed average in this case, then it will be not trivial because the, the product, when you make the, uh, the, uh, the average, the average of the product is not the product of, of the averages. So it is uh, useful to introduce auxiliary function phi n of s and beta. It is not, not random, where you take the partition function for the replicated system. Then you take the noise average, and then you take the log and uh, divide, so on. This is, uh, is not trivial, of course. It is uh, bizarre why you take this. There is a deep motivation, uh, you, uh, and uh, of course everybody knows, but ob obviously if S is equal to 1, we have the annealed case. Of course, uh, there is, uh, it's possible to establish a small industry in order to study the thermodynamic limit of the annealing or replicas. Some of the pioneers I see here in this, uh, in this room. Uh, so to find the limit n which goes to infinity with a very interesting uh, result. Now this limit uh, does exist for an integer s and can be explicitly expressed through a variational principle. It is important uh, to notice that this variational principle is a, a, a principle of a ferromagnetic type. So, so this, uh, you have a ferromagnetic interaction <laughs> among uh, the replicas. So it is a very, very <coughs> conventional. Of course, it is a soup because a, a ferromagnetic uh, variational principle is infer the free energy, second principle of thermodynamics, here and here. Here, so it will be soup. Give a general structure. So, first, to consider just uh, to uh, share it on Kirkpatrick, uh, uh, the uh, order parameters are, uh, I take them positive for the sake of simplicity. They are Q, A, B, where A less than B. So for each couple there is, uh, there is a Q. So there are S by S minus 1 divided by two order parameters. So S equal 1, no order parameter is necessary because everything is explicitly given. For S equal 2, there is only one order parameter. And one checks immediately that the variational principle is the same as essentially as the variational principle for the Curie ice model, so the mean field ferromagnet. I, when S is equal to 3, there are three order parameters, uh, so Q1 uh, and so on. So they, uh, when you change S, uh, you change uh, the space where the order parameters are defined, while we would. Uh, like to have only one order parameter. I do not write here the trial function because it has been written in some uh, uh, transparencies of the previous talk. What is relevant it is uh, this function is a replica symmetric in the QAB. So you take the QAB, then you make a permutation of replicas. So the Q will change, but the function will be the function will be the same, very, very deep. And the variational principle uh, states that uh, in the limit n going, going to infinity, which does exist, this uh, uh, phi of S and beta is the soup of this uh, replicated function. There is a very important property, which gives, of course, uh, the, the beginning of all the stuff, uh, replica symmetry. What happens? That the, this maximum is realized where all the order parameters Q and P have the same value. So, the function is replica symmetric in the sense that if you change, if you exchange replicas, the value of the function will be the same. The soup could be everywhere. The soup is exactly where the, uh, uh, the best solution, the optimal solution for the Q is replica symmetric. So if we exchange, exchange replicas, they will stay the same. So there is only, on, only one constant. Now, Starting from this, from historical point of view, there was a deep uh, and uh, uh, complex development, which uh, 
usually is called the repli replica trick, which was introduced by the pioneers of the study of these systems. Uh, some of them are here or will be here in a few, <laughs> in few hours. And the, 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 the first step is a very, very daring idea, is to extend the definition of the auxiliary function phi from the integers s equal one, one, two, and so on to any real value. For the sake of simplicity, I consider only the case s greater than zero. One can consider also s less than zero, but uh, for, for me it is, uh, it is enough. Now, this extension is very easy because by the very definition, you, have, you see, you have the average of z, z, uh, zn to the s. Now, zn to the s is uh, well defined inside the replica frame if s is integer just by the product. But uh, outside the replica frame, when s is any, uh, there is no problem to make the, the uh, to raise to s this. So there is no problem. Rigorous meaning. And uh, you work a little bit. Uh, I, I write this formula because it is, uh, it is very important. That if you take the, the beta, the derivative with respect to the beta of this function, you have a beta divided by two, 1 plus s minus 1, and then some average of the square of the overlap is an average which uh, involves the, uh, the, re the replica, the two replica average, but uh, it, uh, uh, it is also some deformation. The, uh, I do not write it explicitly because it's not necessary. It is an average, so this is positive. And you see that uh, uh, one has to, to do all the calculation. There is uh, S minus one coming here. S minus one as a region, S equal one, such that it is positive if S is uh, bigger, and uh, negative if S uh, is uh, smaller. And this will be very relevant because it will be, it will be the original effect that uh, in Parisi, for example, rational principle, you have to take a, a, a soup, uh, 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 you, you have to take a, um, in film, instead, uh, instead the soup, how, how it could, uh, could happen? Happen because uh, it happens just because these systems, uh, when they move from S bigger to S, to S less than one, they undergo the fact that the, the source of the beta function gets positive weight or a negative weight. The average is like not right here because, uh, okay. Now the hope is replica trick, replica trick. The hope is that the experience accu accumulated in the study of five n s and beta for any s and its limit phi of s and beta for integer f, uh, for this, uh, you have some experience working for integer f, s. Now the hope is that you can collect from this experience uh, some information such that uh, it will be uh, useful uh, uh, also for generic values of S. In particular, uh, so this is, uh, uh, of course, uh, the, the limit S going to zero is relevant because when S goes to zero, uh, the quenched average becomes, uh, the annealed average becomes uh, quenched average for the, for the log, uh, like uh, it has been written. So that uh, w and the limit when s goes to zero, you have uh, this uh, <coughs> the free energy. So essentially when s is small, uh, you have uh, free energy. And of course it is uh, clear because uh, uh, the power to the s, uh, you have exponent s log, exponent. If uh, like s is small, it's one plus s log of n. Therefore, the log of this is the log of that, so it is no, no finger crossing is necessary because if you, instead you write with the powers, z to the n minus one and so on, it is also true, but you need the finger crossing because there is the problem of, of inverting the limit test going to zero and then uh, going to zero. But working with this uh, inside this frame, there is no, no problem. 
So the, this extension surely is well motivated. Now, okay, so let's study phi, phi of n by, by itself. Okay, n phi of n is subadditive in n for s bigger than 1, and the superadditive for s less or equal to 1. Of course, when s is equal to 1, it's both superadditive and subadditive, but just because it is a constant, so there is no problem. And this you prove he, here by the, by, the, uh, by the interpolation. So there is no problem in getting the limit. The limit when n goes to infinity will be infimum over the, the size of the system if s is greater than 1. It will be the supremum when s is, uh, is less than 1 in general. I mean, it, it, wa it is was known for s equals 0, but it's, uh, it's true in general. Then other properties, uh, these functions are mo monotone, non-decreasing in the parameter s. If you increase s, then it will increase. It is, uh, it is mathematics because it is solder in a goal, but it, it, is also, it is also physical aspect. And then uh, also this is important, these functions are convex in beta for any fixed value of s. It looks trivial, it's not trivial. If you, I mean, Talagran also used this and he had to do terrible work to prove uh, convexity. But as a matter of fact, uh, convexity, convexity can be proven in two lines. It's a very, you never have to uh, essentially integrate the derivative, usually you integrate by parts, you do not have to integrate by parts, but keep the, the noise. And uh, uh, at the end, you will see that uh, it is, it is given by the sum of positive pieces. So convex in beta. Now these functions are also co convex in one divided by s for a serious reason, which is all the inequality you write immediately. And uh, having a convexity, of course, is, uh, is always very important because it gives continu continuity for all, but also other information. Now, uh, we, have, uh, we would like uh, to explore the potentialities of this replica trick, because uh, some, some people, especially mathematici mathematicians, say no, it's only Paris ansatz which is relevant, not uh, the replica trick, and Paris ansatz does not come out from, uh, uh, in a straightforward way by replica tricks. You need the ansatz, you need the intuition. So now I work in the random energy model, which is, uh, very good laboratory because there is uh, replica symmetry breaking and uh, 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 we give a new interpretation of the trick not based on analytic continuation because the analytic continuation I will show uh, uh, cannot be held uh, for this uh, problem. There is always analytic continuation and it is uh, the replica symmetric the replica symmetric case but uh, so, new interpretation of the replica trick. According to this new interpretation, I will get the right order parameter in general, the right trial function, and the right variational principle for any value of s, starting only from the elementary variational principle, which holds when s is integer. So, somebody gives me and uh, of course it is very simple, the variational principle when s is integer, from the variational principle for a integer s, I read the variational principle for any, for any. It is simple, uh, it holds in general, I mean, because of course uh, I'm interested, for example, in the multi-species uh, disordered model where there is no pattern or replica symmetry breathing, but in this way I can find. And uh, in, the, in the case of REM, the uh, replica symmetry is broken, but is broken in a minimal, uh, in a minimal way. So this is, uh, uh, this is partition function, and now the interaction is given by, uh, 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 ran by random Gaussian uh, unit uh, noise. So this is uh, phi n. The annealed average, of course, is the same. L now, we, I establish, uh, firstly, the variational principle for integer values of s. Of course, uh, it's uh, uh, well known, but we have to give a new look at it. 
So z to the s, s integer, average, and then the log. OK. When you take the, uh, you have the average, the average over sigma i, you take this average, it will be average with respect to Gaussian noises. So it is the exponent of one half the variance. So you have the, the beta becomes beta squared, this n divided by two. Here you have this sum, and here you have the average of the square of the sum, Gaussian, Gaussian variables. So that uh, uh, this square is, uh, uh, the average is immediately calculated. There are diag s diagonal terms, and they will give a contribution s. And then there is the off diagonal terms for each couple, for each, so one, two, two, one, and so on. Since I take only the couple, it, uh, it is twice the sum of a less than, a less than beta. OK, then, uh, uh, of course, we have to make, uh, to make the sum. So the, the diagonal terms I put here, and the here, you have to take the, here you have to take this sum, which is not trivial because there are the terms here. <coughs> now, there are now uh, you follow many different uh, methods. Uh, so uh, just for uh, uh, pedagogical reason, I hold this. You split all possible configurations. There are two to the ns configuration. You split in different regions, such that there are k bubbles, so to speak, at most s, each made of s sub r replicas, where r goes from 1 to k. The s r are bigger than 1. Otherwise, you take k less, k, k, one unit less. And the sum of uh, R of the S is S. In such a way, you split, in such a way that in each bubble, replicas are equal configurations. For different bubbles, replicas have different configurations. There are combinatorial term, terms which are irrelevant. So what is the, the sum here, the sum of all this delta? Of course, inside the bubble, they give uh, one half SR, SR minus one, the number of uh, couples in a bubble, and you sum over all bubbles. Then there is uh, a sum of a residual uh, sigma, which gives uh, two, 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 two to the n k, because there are only k independent uh, variables, because inside the bubble, the others uh, are equal. Very, very simple. Now, so the, uh, there is a term coming from each. Of course, in the infinite volume limit, the phi n will be bigger than each contribution, because there is a sum of contribution. But it will be equal to the highest contribution. So uh, now you have a trial function, which does depend on s and beta. And there is the other parameter, which is terrible in a sense, because it, it changes continuously when you go S2, 3, and so on, it changes, which is given by integer k from 1 to n. And then uh, a possible way to split s into the k bubbles, s1, sk. So it is, uh, it is quite, uh, quite complicated. If, uh, uh, of course, we take uh, everything there, so the, the, these were the diagonal terms. This was the contribution coming from uh, uh, inside each bubble, sum over each bubble, there is a simplification, so it is only the square of this. And this is k over s log o2. Of course, this is uh, entropy principle. So this, uh, the second term is entropy of, uh, of this uh, connected with this partition. And this uh, is, uh, is energy, is energy in general. So that uh, uh, you have that uh, this will be the soup. The soup is easily, easily found, of course. There must be replica symmetry. So either the delta are all equal to 0, or they are all equal to 1. So either k is equal to 1. There is only 1s1 equal to s. Or k is equal to s, and uh, the bubbles are, are very, very small. There are S bubbles all very small. 
the supreme can be fine. Uh, it is the soup only between this, this. There is a, just like in the shirt, and there is also replicas in the free hair. For k equal 1, when all, all delta r equal 1, the value is, uh, the, or the trial is given uh, by this expression. For k equal s, of course, is the ergodic beta divided by 4 plus log rho 2. Of course, there is, a, there is a transition point because 1 can, be, can become larger according to the beta, and so there, there, there is a transition. Uh, beta c squared, which is 4 log O2 divided by S, such that uh, 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 this holds uh, when beta is less, the other when beta is larger. Replica symmetry is never broken. All overlaps, of course, are zero in the first region and the one in the second region. We have considered only the uh, S uh, equal 1, 2, and so on. Now we come to the main point. We show that the variational principle at integer s gives strong hint at what should be the variational principle in general for all s. So here, but also it also, also for the other models, we have interpretation of the replica trick. You look at the variational principle. For integer s, you read the values, and you, uh, uh, just uh, like I see, you give an interpretation. So this is the variational principle. If you have the specifications of k, s1, sk, then you give a specification, a trial order parameter, and then uh, you get the value of sigma. But there is, uh, there is, uh, incre uh, of course, it's simple, but incredible. Here you have, you, you see, you have this, the square. I, I can simplify by, um, uh, 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 I mean, if I take one divided by k, sum over r of these squares, these are the averages, so to speak, of the, yes, five, uh, five, of the, of the bubbles, and this will be bigger than uh, uh, the, uh, the average squared, so the average of the square, and this is uh, uh, clearly, I mean, calculated since the sum of our r of s r, r is s. This is will be equal. And so the energy will be bigger than s over k. And so for any, for any phi, if you define s divided by k equal m, you get that this is bigger than 1 over m log o 2 plus beta square m m. You see, it's remarkable. I mean, if you change s and you go higher s, they will go, they will have the same upper bound. Of course, m can be become larger because m is between, uh, is between uh, 1 and s. So the uh, suggestion is to consider this uh, uh, trial function, which does not depend on s. And then, uh, uh, at least for integer values of s, the supremum, of course, is the same as there. The trial function is the independent of s. Only the ratio, so m, must be less or equal to m. So we have a reduction of the, uh, of the order parameters such that they go all in this one function. Reduction also uh, of the, uh, the, the variational principle. And then the, you have, so the, the trick gives you suggestion. You, you say, I take the suggestion, and then you prove the, you prove the theorem that uh, uh, if you introduce the, uh, the convex, uh, this convex trial function, then the value of the auxiliary function is given by the soup up to s of the trial function. You see that s enters only there if s is bigger than 1. And uh, this is if, if s is less than 1. So it now becomes a theorem. It was the replica trick gave the suggest. And now I have uh, the, uh, the theorem. Of course, uh, you see, I mean, uh, the phi is convex. So when you take the soup, it uh, can happen only at the borderline, so replica symmetry. Uh, uh, when you have the soup here, you have, uh, you have, can have uh, 
rho can replica symmetry, and so you receive, uh, you receive uh, everything. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I mean, uh, only I give uh, connection with the uh, why there is uh, there is a replica symmetry breaking, because if you take the the value of the trial function, it can happen that, uh, for example, if you are here, it uh, will give uh, will be given. Uh, uh, by the infimum, bigger, and uh, the replica symmetry cannot be true, not because uh, you cannot continue it, you can continue it, but because it, uh, it becomes, uh, uh, while the f function must be increasing in s, the replica symmetric solution is decreasing in this region. So that at the end, there will be <coughs> diagram like this. So ergodic, delta equals zero, delta equals one, and uh, uh, replica symmetry breaking here. So you see, the, the replica symmetry breaking essentially has nothing to do with the analytic continuation. You can do analytic continuation, but it is the wrong, uh, the wrong solution because, uh, okay, so the essentially, I mean, uh, the, the, the two critical lines are easily found, and uh, this is the phenomenon that I, I have uh, shown, that the function uh, will decrease in S at one point, it will stay stationary, and then it will become to increase when S becomes lower, it cannot be the solution, the solution is found in this term. Okay, so you can, uh, you can write, uh, you can write also uh, this for any kind. I mean, I, I'm interested. We are interested to the multi-species model where the the pattern of the replica is not uh, has not be, been given. So I hope to speak about that uh, in uh, some other occasion. And this was this the end uh, of my talk. To, I have to, to check this. For which model? For the SK, sorry, that was the SK. Yeah, for the SK, SK, yeah. Right. yeah. You looked in continuous and then found. Yes, and there was a phase diagram. Yes. But it was about 0.7 or something, wasn't it? Right, okay. <laughs> You know, what is the final message for those who think about the problem physically, like uh, in terms of concepts of metastable states? And yes, of course, of course, because the the continuation, uh, the analytic continuation here is very, very similar to going to a metastable metastable state. Yes, of course, but the, the real thermodynamic state immediately will go in agreement with the thermodynamics. Okay. Okay. Well. Who? Who?